hello friends welcome back to my youtube channel oracle db online training so our uh, today's agenda is to learn uh, oracle enterprise manager cloud control 13.5 installation on virtual box so uh, in this tutorial we will be uh, learning and understanding from the beginning to the start, start to the end uh, how to install oracle enterprise manager uh, on any virtual box machine and what is the entire process i will be guiding you through uh, this video so before we begin i will be requesting you to subscribe my youtube channel oracle db online training from this uh, youtube channel you will be getting lots of uh, oracle database related stuffs and in previous tutorial i have guided how to like uh, uh, how to change the protection modes and uh, how to configure a data guard brokers uh, or you can do uh, rack installation or any oracle database installation how to create physical standby and how to apply so there are many videos uh, you can refer and uh, you can learn oracle database in coming days also i will be giving you a lot of such videos so please be, be sure to subscribe my channel also you can uh, contact me on this now uh, whatsapp numbers or on this email id if you have any queries so let's begin for today's tutorial that oracle enterprise manager how to install how to perform the installation on the virtual box uh, so let's uh, start so first we'll understand what is the use of oracle enterprise manager what is the overview so basically oracle enterprise manager or also called oem is system management tool which provides the integrated solution for managing the heterogeneous environment so basically it it has a graphical interface console uh, through which you can monitor multiple databases and uh, multiple databases or your like uh, operating system host or so, so it is like a graphical environment uh, for managing overall infrastructure uh, without like uh, logging into the system so it is a very beneficial for uh, managing the, your overall database or your infrastructure okay so oracle enterprise manager is a oracle's own premise management platform that provides you a single dashboard so it has a single dashboard to manage all your oracle deployments in your data centers or in, on the cloud also you can do the same things and throughout through the deep integration of oracle's product stack and it provides a market leading management and automation support for oracle application databases middleware hardware so and number of things you can do from the oem okay so learning the installation is very uh, important how to uh, deploy this uh, oracle uh, cloud must uh, cloud control oem tool okay so this is uh, an overview of your uh, architecture of how to how like uh, uh, OEM works and so we have one console uh, which which is a graphical interface given to the end users and uh, this there could be a multiple agents deployed on a different different databases through the load manager they are uh, communicating with a GUI utility also this data is getting stored in a centralized database called the management repository okay and there will be a BI publisher or uh, your jvmd engines are running okay so i will i will not go into the deeper of this architecture in this tutorial our today's focus is on how to perform the installation process okay so i will be more focusing on the installation stuff rather than going to the architecture in upcoming videos i will be surely uh, making one video where we'll be discussing more about the architecture part also okay so, so let's move to the next part so how to download the oem software so there are basically two ways you can download the oem software that latest version is 13.5 so uh, you can either follow these two links uh, there is a direct link uh, this uh, you can also uh, cross check these links in description box i will be uh, pasting these links uh, so you need to just go to these locations and uh, from there you can like uh, perform you can directly search like this uh, oracle enterprise uh, management controls so this is a edelivery.oracle.com where uh, this is a central centralized repository from where you can download any oracle database related software but it has to be uh, through a valid account so you need to log into your uh, uh, through your 
credentials on this uh, edelivery.oracle.com and once you will uh, log in you need to just search this oracle enterprise manager cloud control so you will be getting a, a multiple software version so latest version is 13.5 uh, you just have to select this one and uh, once you selected you need to just proceed further to the continue options okay so this way you can download from this uh, location also I, Apart from that, you can directly go to oracle.com and slash this location download and you will be getting all these softwares. Okay, so once you have downloaded this software, you need to just unzip uh, these softwares, software location. So I just downloaded this software. So it has basically, it has total five different zip files. You need to unzip them. And once you unzip, you will be getting the actual installation files, which will be having one dot bin file and multiple zip files okay so this is a very important thing once so this is my setup that i will be using in today's uh, tutorial uh, so basically i have just uh, uh, configure one of the uh, machines uh, which will be having at least uh, 12 gigs of uh, ram and uh, like uh, 100 gb of free space okay so this is my machine so if you don't know how to like uh, perform the installation on virtual box uh, uh, VirtualBox Linux installation on VirtualBox. You can refer my previous videos also. I have uh, made those videos and uh, you can, I will be uh, giving the link in the description. You can follow that one. Okay, so I just uh, created, uh, I have just installed this Oracle Linux on VirtualBox and uh, I just created two separate mount points, uh, each of 40 GB space. And uh, the, I just copy all the necessary softwares and everything. So we'll go back to our documentation, what it says. So basically this is the environment details. So we have this Oracle Linux 7.8 already installed on VirtualBox machine. This is my server IP and OEM version will be 13.5 that we have already downloaded. So OMS home is required and that we, will, we have just created this uh, middleware directories. And then the, we have the agent locations we have created. Then DB home location will be using U01. And then OEM repository, the database name will be OEM DB. Okay, so you can just go back to uh, this thing. So this is your OEM repository database that we are creating uh, OEM DB like that. And these are the OMS directory that we have created. Okay, so we'll look one by one. This is repository DB version. So our database version is like the 19.3 version. I have downloaded those software. I will be showing you later. And I will be uh, applying the latest patches also in this. Okay. And we need to like um, give the proper permissions and everything. So physical RAM is 12 GB requirement and 8 GB of space spaces that we have already seen. Okay. So next part is RDBMS software installation and database and instance creation. So in this step, what we'll be, what we'll be doing We'll be installing Oracle 19C software on the line for Linux machine and later we'll be applying the latest RDBMS patches. Okay, once it is done, then we'll be creating a database called OEMDB. Okay. And then once the DB instance is created, we'll verify the database name and everything. So first focus on the database installation. So we have this machine already up and running. And from U01, you can just go back to and here I have just created all the necessary directives. So app, Oracle, uh, product. This is my location of Oracle home. So here on the inside this DB, DB underscore home. So I just uh, copy everything on this location, unzip and given the necessary permissions, everything has been already done. Okay, so this is one part. And another part is I just like downloaded uh, latest patch also i kept it in this location okay and i just uh, like opatch utility version also i have updated in this oracle home so that uh, during the time of patch installation it doesn't create any issues and this is our latest patch that we will be applying later post installation of this softwares okay this is one thing that is already done everything like permission and these things are already done so what will be doing next we'll firing this x host plus commands and from here uh, will be like uh, ex uh, we need to ex sorry go to the Oracle home from here we'll be firing the run installer and our installation process should begin now so basically we will be installing um, 19c home so software 
database software and uh, so create a configure single instance database so in this step what i will do i will be set up a software only so that we can later uh, like do the patching also uh, this is single instance database installation yes uh, this is the enterprise edition database edition enterprise this is my home location uh, sorry base location this will be my db home location we'll click on the next we'll select all the permissions as like uh, o install that is our primary group click on the next automatically run the configuration script so we'll provide the root password over here so it, it will run so it, it is going through uh, prerequisite six uh, swap space is lesser we can ignore this one and uh, nothing to do much worry about since our uh, ram is around 12, G, 12 gigs so it is expecting a little more swap spaces rather than 5 gb that we have given on this machines okay so we'll click on the next okay just uh, give yes and uh, installation process will begin we can also verify the detail tab also here so one thing guys if you want to learn how to like uh, perform the installation or we, we have multiple videos on this uh, even you can do the rack installation also i have uh, i have just uh, provided the links in the description so those videos you can also refer so this installation process is going uh, very smooth and uh, once this installation will be finished then we'll apply the latest patch on this uh, rdbms home and then we'll create a database okay so for the time being we'll be waiting for uh, five to 10 minutes, let's uh, this installation finish and I will discuss further, okay. So guys, we can see that our uh, Oracle software installation is successfully completed. We can close this window, okay. I will be closing this window. And now what we can do is we can cross verify SQL plus hyphen V, uh, sorry, mesh, double, okay. I just given the wrong SQL plus. Okay, so this is my base version uh, 19.3 that is installed with the help of the software installation. Okay, next what we'll be doing will be applying the latest patches. So our patches is kept on this path U01 Q4 this path locations. So I just listed out the patch detail also. Uh, if you have any doubt regarding how to apply the patches on any database, so you can refer my previous video uh, where I have uh, given the complete instruction about how to apply those patches, how to download the latest patches, everything. Okay. So what I have done, I have uh, copied the path. Everything has been ready. I will be applying the latest patch with the help of this command. Okay. This will apply the uh, two patches. Uh, since we have using the local and silent option, it is it will be by default. It will take the your uh, patches as it is, and uh, it doesn't uh, like uh, it will not ask you for proceed further or anything details. By default, it takes uh, yes as the option. So it is moving ahead with the patch installation. Basically, there are two RDBMS related patches that we need to apply. First, we have already copied and we are applying it. And as per our documentation, we are reached to this point. Like uh, we have installed the software. Now we are uh, applying the RDMS home patches. Okay. And then we'll be creating a database instance. So let the patching finish. Then we'll discuss further. Okay, guys. So guys, we can see our first patch is already applied. Now we are applying the second patch on this RDBMS home. So remember this thing, uh, patching is not mandatory for your OEM installation, but it is a good practice to follow, like uh, applying the latest patch on your RDBMS home. Uh, that will be uh, surely uh, beneficial. It, uh, it will remove all the existing bugs. And uh, so this uh, next step is once the patching is completed, then we'll be uh, starting the database creation. Okay, so we'll wait for some time more and we'll look once this patching is finished so guys so guys we have uh, successfully applied both of the patches now we will be verifying these patches one by one so what i will do i will go to patch locations actually controller or actually on this code home and then patch 
on this path, we need to run this command opatch ls in inventory. Grep applied and similarly, you can verify this thing also. These two patches are applied today and uh, this patch is successfully applied and uh, we have updated the patch version to the latest patch that we have. Okay, so with this, we are successfully completed our one of the tasks. So you can see the version is upgraded from 19.3 to 19.10, okay. So now what we need to do further, we'll go back to our original documentation. So we have to create one database name OEMDB. Okay, so what I will do, I will fire this command uh, DBCA and from this utility we'll be creating a database. Just a moment, I guess there was some mistake was done. Okay, uh, OEMDB. We'll be deselecting this. Okay, we'll move to the next tab. I will not specify this one. So basically, this was the issue. We we will be creating a listener later. Uh, we'll deselect this option and uh, data vault option will not choose. Sorry, one more time. We need to modify the file location. Otherwise, it will go to some different location which we don't want. Okay. So U01 within this aura data, select this one. Use OMF file and we'll be selecting little lower. Yeah, that is fine. Now we'll come to this page management credential. We have to give the password for CSN system. Okay. Click on the next tab, click OK. Now we'll initiate the create database and the summary page is also here. Start the database creation, okay. Let this uh, database creation finish and we'll discuss further. Uh, okay. It will take around five to 10 minutes for uh, database creation. Once this is done, we'll create one local listener on this system and then we'll proceed further, okay guys. So guys, our uh, database creation is still in progress. I will be requesting if you have any question, any doubts, you can uh, um, message me in the comment box. I will surely try to help you out. And also during the time of uh, database creation, you can uh, cross verify your alert logs that uh, that is there in the uh, this uh, database uh, creation utility uh, prompt and uh, from here, you can copy this and uh, you can like uh, cross check what all operations are happening in the background from the alert log. Okay. And uh, it should not take more time now. Uh, it is almost uh, finished. And once the database is successfully created, then we'll discuss further. Okay, guys. So, guys, we can see OEMDB is uh, almost uh, finished. And uh, now we are very good with uh, uh, further process. So, we'll close this window. And uh, what I will do, I will be creating one uh, uh, listener also. So basically our database is ready, but we don't have a listener configured yet. So what I will do, I will fire the net MGR command uh, that will be invoking. Sorry, net MGR. So using this utility, you can configure all the network related changes for your database uh, inside your uh, Oracle home. Okay. So I will be selecting this listener option over here. I will be selecting a listener name. So I will be giving the listener name as this one. And what will be my listening location? So I need to provide the listening address. So this is the host name that I have given. And this is the port, the, I'm choosing the default port. Then we have to choose the database also. So our database name is uh, OEMDB, okay. And this is my home, SID will be also same, OEMDB. For double B is and that is chosen, and this is once done. Then I uh, will go to a uh, file option. We'll save this network configuration. We'll close this window, and now from here we have to start the LS and our CTL. Sorry, LS and our CTL start. LS and our CTL. Sorry, CTL start. Scanner. Okay. Our listener will start now. 
what we'll do, we'll connect to your database and we'll try to check that further details, like uh, what is my database name and other details. And so this is my database. Okay, so this is open in read write mode and our listener is also up and running. So with this, we are completed our, uh, this task of our DBM software installation and database instance creation. Now we have, we have to modify certain parameters that is required during the time of uh, OEM installation. Okay, so I've listed out all the parameters. I will be list, uh, making a changes of all these parameters one by one. Uh, so basically there is a first parameter called allow insert with update check. It should be a true a session catch or it should be 200. Shared pool should be 600 MB and the processes should be 600 at least. Then we'll bring down the database startup and we'll cross verify all these parameters one by one. Okay, so I will be modifying all these parameters one by one. Let's uh, run these commands from in the database. And, uh, this is modified. Next, we'll copy all the parameters. We'll try to run all together. So in the background, we can verify the alert log also. So we have modified all the four parameters and it is now bringing down the database and it, it will bring up the database. Once this is done, then our, uh, in this step we will be finished, like uh, modifying the parameters. Uh, these are required for the OEM configuration. Okay, we should be. So remember guys, this is our OEM repository database that we, are, we have configured. Uh, it will store all the changes, uh, all the information related to uh, OEM console and all the details. Okay, so with this, uh, again, we'll check the database name and other information. So this is done. Now we'll verify all these parameters by running these commands. So from here, you can see first uh, sorry, so parameter cursor and just put catch a session 200 this is my second parameter and third parameter that we need to verify okay next show parameter processes that we need to verify So guys, our uh, parameter verification is all also completed. Now what we'll do, uh, we'll, do, we'll uh, start with the next step that is our actual OEM installation process. So uh, we have almost uh, finished with our prerequisites and uh, uh, we have already created these directories that will be required during the time of installation. One is a middleware, one is agent. Okay, so with this, uh, these two directories is already created. Uh, we will uh, cross verify by using LSF and LRT, it should be empty. And uh, this is okay. And next one is 0 to So remember guys, I'm, uh, I created database on U01 mount point. Now I'm selecting U02 as mount OEM location. Okay. So guys, if you are enjoying this video, uh, uh, make sure uh, click on like button. Also, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe. Uh, it will uh, keep on motivating me. So I will be making uh, such videos in future also. And I hope I, you are understanding everything. If you have any questions so far, you can uh, mention in the comment box. I will try to help you out. So basically guys, I have already copied all the software in this uh, path uh, slash U02 OEM. And these five files are required. So this is our initial binary file that is uh, that we need to execute. Okay, so uh, we'll start with the installation. So guys, we have a cross verified database name as listener name and uh, Now we'll cross check the space also and the temporary spaces, minimum 15 GB of, of temporary spaces and uh, 50 GB on mount point. And this is our software location. So we'll be starting with this bin, bin file. We have run the exhaust plus and then we started this 
using the Oracle usage. So basically it will go through the some extraction process. So basically this zip file will be extracted uh, within a temporary locations and uh, once that that is finished then it will pop up with the actual installation files and uh, this we have like uh, cross verify everything and uh, started the bin execution as per our documentation. Uh, parallelly we can check the logs also. So this is the log that extraction is happening and it should take uh, two to three minutes and within a two to three minutes it will be done and uh, then our actual screen will pop up. So guys, uh, this is very simple task that uh, we can follow and uh, do the installation process. I'm still waiting for uh, an actual installation page. It should not take uh, much time. Basically, it depends upon your hardware or software configuration. Uh, since we are doing it on virtual box, so there is always possibility of slowness. So guys, our installation page is here and we can see there are multiple installation options given. One is simple installation and one is advanced and uh, either software only option we can choose. So we'll go ahead with the uh, advanced option here and we'll select the next. Uh, you, you can provide the Oracle uh, details credential or you can skip for any notification. So it is going for prerequisite checks. It should uh, not take more time. Once your prerequisite checks is done, then So these are the warnings we can ignore and uh, we have we can see and there is like a port range it is uh, we have already given them higher range of the ports so these are the just warning you can ignore and we can proceed with the yes option and on the next page it will be asking me the middleware location and agent location so we have already created this location we'll just paste the location over there and uh, We'll copy the agent location also. Now we have to give the local host name also. So in the local host, we'll give the name of our local host. Since uh, it is asking me the actual host name, so we can ignore that error. On the next page, it is uh, giving me this plugin locations and everything. So by default, these plugins are selected with like Oracle Cloud Database, Oracle Database, Exadata, and these things. We click on the next page. Now, the very important page uh, that is your uh, password related to WebLogic server configuration. So we have to give the WebLogic password over here. Also, load manager users credential we have to provide. So remember guys, whatever the password you are giving here, you should uh, keep it somewhere safe so that uh, you can easily refresh it whenever it is required. Okay, then we we'll click on the next page. Basically, this is a WebLogic server configuration. Okay, on the next page, it is uh, giving me the database connection details. So we will have to provide the details of our connection related. So that we have to give the port name numbers. SID, CC user password. Here we'll be choosing the small option over here. Oh, we have just uh, wrongly uh, mentioned the host name. We need to modify it. 
so i will be providing the actual host name over here then we'll go ahead with the next so now it is executing on the next page uh, there are some warnings we can choose the fix auto fix option also so basically uh, these are the a few new parameters that has been introduced for uh, uh, OEM 13.5 and uh, uh, we can choose the auto fix option here so all all the failures has been gone and now we are left with the warnings so basically these are like uh, uh, database related uh, warnings like uh, redo log files and uh, size so we can uh, either increase this parameter and try to uh, check again or we can ignore for the time being so we'll uh, move ahead we'll be ignoring this since the size is like a 300 uh, mb is required for redo logs and there's parameters also so this is not critical so this is just a warning we can ignore we'll click on the next so now it is moving ahead now we have to give the enterprise manager configuration details in this we will we'll have to provide the sysman users password now choose a unique password so that uh, you can easily remember it and then agent registration password also we have to provide and these are the new data files tab sorry table spaces that will be created and this will be location click on the next then on the next page enterprise manager shared location which is uh, already selected by the installation page we'll keep it as it is now we can see the ports configuration detail is shown and these are the port ranges and the default ports are selected by the installer we we'll click on the next page once we'll click on the next page, it will provide me all the summary details like whatever the disk space available, installation locations, database information. So all these information is uh, mentioned in this summary page, and then we can like go ahead with actual installation page. So now it is moving ahead. Initially, it will move till the nineteen percent very quickly, and uh, from there it will start taking more time so guys uh, the overall installation um, i mean the initial uh, whatever the changes that we need to do is uh, up to this point only and then now the entire process will move ahead and uh, it will be like uh, it, it will be like uh, uh, 2 to 3 hours of uh, entire journey from here so basically there will be an n number of uh, execution will happen behind uh, this installation process and uh, uh, i will be i will be uh, taking pause in between and uh, i will be showing you some of the screens uh, uh, during this uh, entire process and uh, remember there are few occasions like uh, on percentage 19 percentages it will be taking more time then it will uh, move with uh, one or two percent then again uh, till 40th percent it will be uh, waiting and this way this way it will uh, go through various processes so you don't have to worry about at all and uh, you just have to start the installation process and uh, uh, in the background it will finish it will take some time and once this installation will finish then uh, will it will be a very i mean uh, the overall installation will be finished so at the end you need to execute certain uh, scripts that uh, i will show you later so uh, parallelly you can verify the logs also and uh, see whatever the changes is happening in the background you can cross check the those also so i hope uh, you guys have uh, you guys are enjoying uh, you are able to understand how to perform the uh oem uh, 19 c installation on virtual box machine and uh, so maybe up in upcoming videos i will be guiding you how to like uh, perform certain other operation related to uh, oem and uh, what are the administrative tasks that we, we can do from the oem 
so there will be uh, lots of uh, new videos will be coming uh, related to oem in futures and i will be requesting you to subscribe my channels uh, and uh, if you are if you like this video just click on the like button and uh, as we can see there are uh, like currently there are um, multiple changes are happening and uh, these are this can be seen in the detail page also okay so i will be uh, wait for uh, some times and uh, let the installation process uh, finish then we will discuss further so mostly uh, this process will hang for like uh, you know, another 2 hours so uh, we will show the screen in between and once the installation uh, this process completes 100% then we will execute the all root script that will be uh, i will be show show those detail also later just keep watching So guys, we can see uh, now it is completed almost 40% and uh, we can uh, parallelly check the logs, whatever the changes are happening on the prompt which uh, we have started this process, there will be a multiple changes uh, that is shown and it is showing me a successful state. So from here we can cross check there will, there will be like multiple changes or, or the installation progress status shown in between and uh, you can see there are <coughs> various processes that it go goes through and uh, so it will be like time consuming process and uh, again we'll go back to our original screen and from there we'll be checking all the details so guys i will be uh, starting the logs also parallelly and i will be requesting you uh, i will i mean i will be quite some, for some times and uh, let this uh, process complete then we'll discuss further
guys you can see uh, there are like uh, deployment uh, deployment completed successfully or there are different messages that we can see and uh, it is almost uh, two two hours uh, completed since our initial uh, screen of the installation process so this is a very uh, lengthy process and uh, it is a resource intensive process i will be requesting if you have a high configuration machine then it will be a little more faster is at this junction my installation 100% successfully completed now i will be checking the uh, next step that is uh, execution of all root.ss file so this file is available at this path so we have to just run it from the root users and uh, by running this it will make all the root uh, it will run all the root related uh, files root.ss file from all the existing locations okay so it is uh, just executed all the root.ss file and uh, we can also cross verify the logs related to that uh, executions remember guys uh, the installation has to be successfully completed till 100% once that is finished then you have to execute this root.sh file and uh, so guys uh, uh, once that is completed then we will have to uh, stop the oms process and uh, once your oms is down then uh, after that we'll uh, start it again and then we'll connect to the, our uh, actual uh, oem screen that is oem console you can say uh, so our oms is down and now we have started the oms server and from it will take few minutes of time uh, once this is started then we'll connect to uh, we'll first check the status uh, in detail and then we'll like uh, perform will connect to the server and I will cross verify all the details okay so it should not take uh, two to three minutes of uh, time so OMS is almost uh, starting and uh, once our OMS starts then we will check further so here we can see our OMS process started successfully and now we have to cross check the details so we have to fire this command by going to the middleware uh, binary location emcpl status oms hyphen detail so it will ask you the password for the sysmen user so whatever the password that you have given during this installation time you can pass the password and you can see the detail of your console url and upload url so using these urls you can log into your uh, enterprise control manager so I just uh, copy this path and I just gone to the look, uh, gone to that uh, URL and uh, using that URL, I just uh, I, I have passed the lo in, in place of localhost, I have given like uh, actual IP and now sysman and the password I have provided and I will try to connect. So, as we can see this it is getting connected and now it is our first screen that is license agreement we have to accept this one so i will accept this license agreement so this is our welcome and welcome to enterprise manager cloud screen and uh, this is the first page you can see post your successful installation and we'll try to check what all the tabs and details are given so we can like uh, zoom in and cross check everything like welcome page and once again uh, we'll move back to our other page detail also we'll go to the enterprise and we'll first we'll come to call all the tabs what is uh, available so from here you can see setup option is there so all the targets you can add from this location so there are various tabs and options are given on the welcome screen and uh, so initial setup console uh, 
is like uh, it is in process only uh, you can also cross check the summary page also from here So guys, uh, we have very good successfully installed this uh, OEM uh, 13.5 version. That is our latest uh, release uh, for Cloud Control 13C. And uh, you can cross check this detail also. And uh, I hope uh, you have understood all the things and the process uh, during the installation. So there are various steps you can uh, go through and uh, learn about this so in upcoming videos i will be uh, i will be talking more about uh, oem related steps so there will be a separate videos on uh, various uh, oem related uh, administrative tasks and other steps so so that's it guys i hope uh, everything is clear so far and if you have anything any doubts so you can uh, ping me in the comment box and uh, like uh, you can uh, so so there are like uh, options of uh, adding your target so uh, like uh, you can add your database or your uh, host uh, by going to uh, this tab options add target manually so like uh, there is install agent results and those things so we'll be covering this uh, in upcoming videos uh, for the time being i will be uh, stopping here i hope everything is uh, clear so far our uh, today's agenda was totally clear that we will be covering the installation parts so guys thanks for watching and subscribe our youtube channel uh, have a good day bye bye